we want to evaluate the limit of the given function as x comma y approaches four comma three. We saw in our previous example, the easiest way to determine a limit like this would be to perform direct substitution, but notice in this case, when x is four and y is three, our denominator is equal to zero, and we know division by zero is undefined. This does not mean the limit does not exist. It also doesn't mean that we can't find the limit by performing direct substitution. We can often perform algebraic techniques on a given function, which will then allow us to perform direct substitution to determine a limit. Let's begin by taking a look at the graph of the given function. The graph of the function gives us the purple surface, and I've plotted the point four comma three here in black. We can tell from the graph, as we approach a point four comma three from any path, we would be approaching the same function value, which indicates the limit does exist. So going back to our work, two common algebraic techniques to change a function to then be able to find the limit by performing direct substitution is to factor as well as rationalize the denominator. In this example, we will take a look at both. So beginning with the given function, let's call this method one, we will rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, which is the square root of the quantity x minus y plus one. Next, we multiply the denominator. The square root of x minus y times the square root of x minus y is equal to x minus y. And then we have plus one square root x minus y minus one square root x minus y, which is zero. And then we have negative one times positive one, which gives us minus one. We leave the numerator in factored form. Notice now we have a common factor of x minus y minus one between the numerator and denominator that simplifies to one or simplifies out. Notice now we just have the square root of the quantity x minus y plus one. So this is not the same function as the original function. We've just removed the discontinuity of the point four comma three. However, they are equivalent functions except at the point four comma three, which means we can now determine the limit by performing direct substitution with this function instead of the original function. But let's also take a look at how we could have factored to change the form of the function. So for method two, if we group the quantity x minus y in the numerator, we can write x minus y as the square of the square root of the quantity x minus y. So again, beginning with the original function, we will write the numerator as the square of the square root of the quantity x minus y minus one over the same denominator. Notice now the numerator is a difference of squares where a squared minus b squared is equal to the quantity a plus b times the quantity a minus b, which means we can factor the numerator and write the numerator as the square root of the quantity x minus y plus one times the square root of the quantity x minus y minus one and again, the denominator stays the same. And notice we can simplify again. We have a common factor of the square root of the quantity x minus y minus one between the numerator and denominator. And notice how, and notice after simplifying, we get the same function we had above of the square root of the quantity x minus y plus one. So this tells us the original limit is equal to the limit of the square root of the quantity x minus y plus one as x comma y approaches four comma three. And notice how we can find this limit by performing direct substitution. Substituting four for x and three for y, we have the square root of the quantity four minus three plus one, which is equal to the square root of one, which is one, and one plus one is equal to two, which is the limit we were looking for. So again, going back to the graph one last time, we now know as we approach the point four comma three from all paths, we would be approaching the function value of two. I hope you found this helpful.